The unconsciousness is probably the most difficult problem for science to address because we're, we're dealing to try to explain something that we can't put numbers on, we can't measure in the traditional ways. Uh, you believe that uh, quantum physics can help us understand consciousness, and I find that hard to believe. I'm a physicist, so I come at it from the side of, of, of quantum physics, and I guess I've been interested in seeing how might you relate it consciousness to quantum physics. I, I'm by no means an expert in the neurophysiology and whatever of, produce, of, of, of what might actually produce the consciousness, but I, I have been interested in how you might relate it to quantum physics. Okay. And I, I do have a formalism. It's not a complete theory because there's lots of unknown elements in this, in this formalism for relating consciousness to, to quantum, quantum physics. How does it so, go? So basically, I would say in, in, in the quantum physics, we have something called a dynamical theory. It, it's, it's a relationship between things that are called quantum operators, which unfortunately I don't really have time to explain mm -hmm. here, but it, 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 it's, it, it basically tells how does the world evolve? How does it change with mm -hmm. time? What are the rules? If you know what the universe is like at one time, how can you get it at a later time? And these rules also work backward, by the way. If you know it at one time, you could, in principle, you could get it at, at, at some past time. So those are the dynamical laws of physics. And it's recently found that, that there are many solutions to these dynamical laws that could say what the actual state of the universe is. So there are many different so-called quantum states of the universe that obey these dynamical equations to describe the universe. So you, you need the, the, the quantum laws of evolution and you need the quantum state. But I would say that's not enough because consciousness is a very real phenomenon. You know, it, it, as Descartes said, I think, therefore I am, or, and or cogito ergo sum. We, we have conscious perceptions or sentient experiences, which I regard as all that we're aware of at once. And so to connect this, I just propose that each one of these conscious perceptions has a measure, which is, it's a little hard to describe, but it's sort of how much does each one of these exist? Is it probable or improbable? So each conscious perception has a measure that's given what's by what's technically called the expectation value of a quantum operator in the quantum state of the universe. So, so, so you're dealing with the quantum state of the universe. You're not dealing with the quantum state within molecules within our neurons of, of the brain, because some people who make the claim that you need to understand quantum physics to understand consciousness work with neurons and, and parts within neurons to, to explain how quantum processes are, are working. You're looking at a totally different approach to... Well, it's, I'm only doing that because I, I think that there is some simple, elegant quantum state for the entire universe. But of course, that part of that description should include human brains. So it's, it's going to be, I mean, you know, if con the conscious perceptions that are produced by human brains are going to be produced, say, in human brains. And so it's, that's going to, it's going to be that relevant part of the universe. So in a sense, I suppose if I just, it would be sufficient just to know the quantum state of the brain, but I'm saying that's part of the whole universe. So it, at least in the fundamental level, I don't want to, I don't want to say that, well, we have to have, we have to be able to find out where the brain is and what, it, what state it's in. I'll, I'll just start from the quantum state of the universe. And then these operators in some sense could look and see where in the universe is there a brain and what, in what state is this brain. And so the idea basically is that if it finds a brain in the universe that's, that's in a good configuration, then that can lead to a conscious perception. And you don't need anything outside of the physical world to, to create consciousness, therefore? Well, in some sense, of course, I'm not really explaining how the consciousness arises. I'm just getting, I, I'm just proposing a, a formalism to give the rules by how much consciousness does occur. Mm. So it is leaving it mysterious as to exactly how it's produced, but in some sense in science, I think if we have a good description, if we can make predictions about something, then sometimes we leave it aside as to, you know, what's the alternate ontology of what it is. So I'm, I'm not really answering that. I'm just, I'm just trying to say how, how might it relate to the rest of quantum physics. So we have, the, we have the dynamical laws and the quantum state, and now I'm saying we need rules for getting the, the measures of the conscious perceptions. Because these rules do involve uh, the expectation values of certain operators, there would be one operator for each perception, and we don't know what those operators are. So, so it's, it's, it, it's a generalized theory, but it doesn't, have, it doesn't have the detailed content that one would need for a detailed theory. Your understanding of the quantum physics of consciousness, if that is a way of at least understanding it, does that have any relationship to your belief that there is a God? 
that created the universe? Is there any, or, or is it totally independent of that? I think it could be logically independent of that. I mean, of course, it's part of my total belief sure. that God creates the whole universe, including the quantum state, the dynamical laws, the, the rules for getting the measures of conscious perceptions and the conscious perceptions themselves. So but, I if God, but if quantum physics were a brute fact and there were no God, you'd have the same argument. Yes, I think I, I, as far as I can see, my ontology as to the quantum wor world and the, and the conscious perceptions, it's not logically dependent on the view of God and... and of course, it's very hard to say if, you know, if, if I'd somehow been raised differently and didn't believe it, it's hard to say what beliefs I would have come up with. But, but I don't see anything inconsistent with either theism or atheism in this picture. 